Hello everyone, greetings for the day and uh, in today's uh, segment we're going to talk about some daily activities that you can give it in your classes to engage your toddlers so that your class is filled with magical moments. Okay, so let's get started with that and uh, what you need is like, you know, there are many toddlers at your home, many toddlers at your class. So what we need to have is like we need to arrange an arsenal of fun activities for the kids so that, you know, they're always entertained, you know. So it's not about having fancy toys uh, or filling up your entire classroom with fancy toys or filling up your entire playroom with fancy toys. But it's not about that. It's about, you know, having a very quick few adjustments that you can do it so that you can transform your uh, activities into a perfect toddler classroom. So what are these hands-on exercises and why do these hands-on exercises are very important for our children is what we're going to be seeing it in this particular lesson. The first important thing, the more that you give on and hands-on exercises, children or the toddlers would work on uh, discovering the material or exploring the material or they start exploring the environment around them. So that's the reason we have to let them discover certain activities and play or moving around the place is also important. So make sure that the child uh, stands up and this um, moves around the house or moves around the classroom so that you know the movement is very essential now how can you adapt this particular thing in your online classroom it's like you can ask them you know uh, uh, can you go pick your book or can you go pick up your color pencil and come back or can you go pick up uh, a spoon and come back from your kitchen or just uh, uh, get a soft toy from your uh, uh, you know uh, a living room or your bedroom so you can ask them something so we need a little shorter break for children so that you know they have this extended movement so that that can be incorporated into your lesson planning so movement is very important the more that you include uh, these kinds of activities children start to begin hands-on learning and at the same time we could also make it more effective if you're planning for some sensory activities also so uh, what we're trying to do overall is like we're trying to engage the children or engage the toddlers with wonderful activities that you created. So uh, if you want your class to be filled with magical moments in the online sessions, you can plan up for this. And I consider like one to three years being the toddlers and uh, we need to have activities on fine motor, gross motor, sensory activities so that, you know, they work on the early learning skills. The first important thing that we need to work uh, based upon the NEP policy is developing the literacy. Okay, so that is your ABCs and developing numeracy. That's one, two, threes. So how can I... Uh how can I develop literacy? It's like, you know, where children are learning to form letters, they learn about the sounds, the words and so much more. And coming down to the mat, coming down to mat, they would be working more on the hands-on exercises about counting, recognizing the numbers, doing a skip count, addition, matching and a lot more. Okay. Uh, so uh, apart from this, we can also include some science exercises like what floats, what sinks, can we sort them, you know. So what's uh, how a volcano is actually formed, what are the number of planets that we actually have it. These are something that, you know, children can actually be given to it uh, because they're very curious to know a lot of scientific things that actually happens around them, you know, because they have that naturalistic way to explore the world so you can also include some simple science experiments or science exercises also to our children uh, that will help them to think more and uh, create a uh, better thereby they get a great idea or uh, you know they start working on oh, how was the experiment all about you know and since they're all involving themselves the child is actually learning through a lot of sensory activities because you give them enough amount of hands-on exercises right so to make it much more easier what we need to do is like we need to find out uh, what is available around us okay so we need to work on the discovery play methodology okay because we have limited sources we are not in schools right now we are at home so we need to make it very easy for the child so that you know they start discovering the objects around them and we all start walking around the supplies what we have and every time please make sure you are using awesome words because every time you're asking a child to work on a particular uh, uh, skill like uh, beta can you please go there and get this you have to appreciate you know wow you were really quick or you got it correct you know something like that try using awesome words that's going to be really helpful now uh, the first section is about the exploration. In schools, we generally used a Montessori environment. We consider that to be as our EPL skills, right? So, but at home, we can also have the alternative ways of following the same exercises. One could be transferring the lentils, you know, so you can give them two bowls and the child will be able to transfer lentils from one bowl to another. If they don't have lentils, lentils, give them an alternative. It could be almonds, it could be walnuts, it could be beans, it could be any other 
uh, you know dry object where the child is working on one particular skill on that day and that's transferring it could be right to left movement or left to right movement but we are finding an alternative way to supportive early do the practical exercises now once the child is confident in doing a dry pouring you go on to dry pouring sorry transferring you get into pouring it could be dry initially and then it could be wet pouring uh, you know like pour uh, a glass of water from one container to another from one mug to another from one glass to another or the glasses can be of equal sizes they can be of unequal sizes now this is where the child gets to understand the capacity like how much of water how much of a liquid can actually fill in a particular glass or a mug and then uh, we could also have sponging activities uh, or squeezing activities you could uh, we generally used to have a uh, a sponge uh, you know the child used to dip out the sponge and squeeze out the excess water these were something that we used to use it in, in the montessori classroom to clean up the desks and uh, to clean up uh, uh, the surface of the trays and stuff like that so you could also introduce the same thing and what's more important is opening the boxes closing the boxes opening the bottle closing the bottles opening the lids and jars is also important because that gives them a great uh, pincer grip okay so that's the preliminary exercises that we actually work on this is a a segment of a smaller section which is going to be helpful for children to explore uh you know certain simple skills or i could say it is a most important preliminary skills once they are able to explore this we can slowly move and convert these skills into the development of fine motor so this is where they get the entire hand grip we consider that as a whole hand grip right so you could encourage children to wash vegetables to wash fruits to start peeling and cutting the fruits to whisk to stir to bake a particular uh, cake or anything that is available at home and they also learn to use the sharper objects it could be the knife skills uh, they could also use a butter knife so that you know they would be able to uh, butter the bread okay serve a platter that's also important because that's going to add to their dining etiquette right so uh, this is slowly leading uh, from exploration towards developing on a great fine motor stability okay so this is considered to be as a kitchen skills i could say that now once they're fine with this we get into the three finger grip again it's essential for uh see ultimately we are working towards the fine motor development right now you work a little bit more on the three finger grip like spooning scooping uh you start giving more activities on building with the blocks you ask children to work work with tongs you ask them to peg the clothes you ask them to pin the cloth you can also have uh, puzzles in case if any of the parent has a puzzle at home you could also uh, ask them to work on large puzzle boards uh, which has got small knobs sometimes there would be knobless puzzles also all these things are going to explore and help the child to work on the motor development and uh, the last one or i could say something which is very important is a circular arm movement now this is a, a greater way uh to introduce children because uh, when they're starting to work on a circular arm movement the entire arm is getting the flexibility okay and at the same time you it it it's like you know the entire fingers are held and the fine motor is also getting rebuilt on okay like it could be scrubbing a table it could be scrubbing a, a plate or it could be scrubbing a utensil you know you ask them to do on this exercise polishing i wouldn't suggest because sometimes in case if they are allergic to some polishes and varnishes we could avoid this uh, rolling a mat unrolling a mat tearing a paper into smallest uh, uh, pieces that uh, they can actually tear it into because that's going to help them towards developing that uh, circular arm movement also cutting paper using a whisk okay so these could be something which is related to the fine motor the second segment is related to movement and now this is something that our children are lagging and do not hesitate to move around your furniture around your home okay so when you start moving around the furniture around your home uh, this is where you're trying to give children a little space towards uh, uh, con- con- controlling their own movements now it could be like sitting on a particular line so you need to have some field markers if you don't have any field markers you could just take a tape and just uh, mark it onto your floor itself and make sure that the child is like only sitting on the uh, line or standing on a particular line or starts walking on a particular line or you could also give them some objects where the child starts to walk on a line using the object uh, or slowly he also starts to carry an object it could be a tray a jug or a rug or a chair or a table 
okay so that's more important then again the more that you actually give them what happens is like you know the child is getting a little bit more on control of their movement so initially you could begin with straight lines and then you can make it a little bit more complex by adding curves you can add on to more slants you can add on to crisscross lines circular lines zigzag lines and many other combinations as you wish you know so it's all about uh, uh, how the teacher and how the parent want to modulate uh, by giving these exercises and slowly you could encourage as soon as they hear the bell the doorbell rings you could also instruct your child to walk straight and to open and to close the door so uh, this is uh, something related to movement and when you want to develop on the gross motor movement so whenever there is a chance ask your children or motivate your children to swing to walk to run jump uh, to jump to hop using one foot two foot to roll a ball to kick a ball you know to throw a ball to uh, to catch a ball all these things are going to be really helpful now now do you think that it is going to be really difficult for you to make sure your play is really difficult you know you can plan your lessons well in advance by keeping a fine motor activity by keeping a gross motor activity what could be the action that you're going to be introducing for your class what could be the rhyme that is going to be supporting for this particular activity is something that the teacher is going to be planning for the day and the parent can actually follow it up from there on okay and uh, uh, the something which is more important and essential for all of us is like to take care about ourselves and this is the third segment okay so children needs to be encouraged to take care of themselves so we call this as a personal care wherein we need to give a little importance towards the grooming ability one is like on a personal hygiene you know frequently washing their hands to wash their face to blow their nose using a napkin and to dispose the napkin in the dustbin to dress themselves to undress themselves when it is required to keep their hair comb to brush their hair 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 you know taking off and putting the coat on the apron on to roll off their sleeves when they're washing their hands if they're wearing a full arm sleeve now these are something which is related to the personal care okay cutting the nails it could be you know and not biting the nails all these are something which is related to your grooming and i could also suggest that you could also have some dressing frames like say for example uh, uh, in montessori classes we use these dressing frame activities but in a non line class what you could do is like you can give papa's shirt or uh, 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 the child's t-shirt itself which has lots of buttons and you could encourage them to button the shirt to unbutton the shirt shirt and if you have any other materials which has snaps you can help them to snap it to unsnap it and if you have a jacket which has got a zipper uh, so you could help the child to uh, do a zip activity or and to do an unzipping activity and some of the uh, um, you know like girls dresses women's dresses have a lot of hooks right so you can help them to hook and hand hook from the eye of that particular dress and buckles the many of the bells have buckles right so you could teach children to buckle and unbuckle to lace you can give them a shoe and teach the children uh, lacing and unlacing you can give various patterns depending upon the flexibility and the level of the child's skill in doing it now this are all the different alternatives that you could do it so at montessori schools we do have a dressing frame material which encourages the child but at home you could find the alternative resources so thereby what happens you're not uh, leaving out the activities which was essential for the personal care and at the same time cleaning is also very important uh, help your child uh, to sweep the floor to clean up the spills to wipe the table it could be after the meal or it could be after the class or, or whatever activity that your child had done maybe a paint class or an art class they need to clean up uh, whatever was the spell out and wipe the table to wash the dish and sometimes in case if they are seeing the parents doing something you, you need to also encourage children to do sweeping to pick up the dry leaves to do some gardening you know collecting the dry leaves and uh, you know dispatching all the waste all across so this is something which is very essential because the more that you start introducing the care towards environment children learn it much better and cleaning is very very essential and it's too hygienic so we got to include these activities too and as we all know that the children by uh, nature their 
they are naturalists right so if you have uh, uh, planters uh, if you have plants in your balcony you could encourage your child to give water every day to the plants you know so thereby they are also more encouraged towards doing outdoor and indoor gardening they take care of their uh, plants very well and in case if you have a pet at home they could feed the pet you know they could take them on a walk they could play with the pet and this is how the children are also showing a little bit of love and affection towards the nature and towards the respect uh, sorry and towards the animals you know so just like how we respect the human beings children will also start respecting and showing the love and affection towards the plants and the pets too so this all comes under care you know so they take care of themselves they take care about the environment and that's how the child is naturally uh, you know grooming okay the last one which we could include include in our toddler activity is uh, the grace and courtesy again it falls under uh, taking care of one person because any time that you meet somebody you need to be very very graceful okay so you have to introduce children how to greet okay or how to introduce themselves to another person when they meet or what to offer if the guest arrives at home it could be like can i can i offer you a cup of uh, tea or coffee can i give you a glass of water or what you prefer to have for this particular meal so let the child start offering the guest or any newcomer who is actually coming to your house and uh, uh, um teaching children to give and to receive compliments this is also important and making ways for someone to pass like you know so when there is an obstacle or when somebody is interrupting you know asking uh, excuse me or you know uh, or saying sorry for interrupting is also something which is essential that you teach children at the initial places itself uh, and then introducing golden words like please sorry thank you or uh, you know saying sorry when they interrupt someone these all will fall under grace and courtesy so uh, all these resources we do have as a proper lesson plannings and uh, you could see in our some of our work is made public uh, videos so if you would like to uh, uh, you know like access Uh, more of our work you could subscribe to train brain channel and you would find a lot of such montessori helpful activities that you could engage and teach to your children at home and that's going to be a very great alternative source of education so i wouldn't say that uh, this is the only thing that you will be introducing but when children do come for the schools be it physical or be it an online school there is a structured way of introducing the conceptuals uh, i know the parents have abundance of knowledge of what to introduce and how how to introduce but teacher has the best knowledge she has the great experience in delivering the content depending upon the level and depending upon the age and readiness of the child so they would have the teachers would have a strategic planning to introduce any lesson plan to the children and that goes very very systematic and that's how you see a holistic development not only in uh, uh, the early um and um what do you call literacy or the numeracy but they would be working towards the holistic development of your children so a play way i could say it's like a play way methodology which has got a wholesomeness of montessori activities that's going to be you know very helpful for the children so as teachers and parents we got to be very very agile so we got to have a lot of patience we need to have a lot of dedication when we introduce certain things to our children and always remember that children are um, very different uh, I, i i don't say very different they're born with abundance of uh, uh, what do you call the absorbent mind capability the more that you do in the initial 6 years is what the children take it up you know so we need to do it very systematically uh, very diligently when you introduce the conceptuals to children they do wonders and uh, when when this is how you see a difference uh, to a child who has been educated in this way and to a child which was left a carefree way of teaching or learning okay so this is the major difference and uh, this is a small uh, segment of uh, a small portion of an activity that was that can be included for our toddlers and it is included in tbps uh, every academic year okay so that's it uh, for today so i hope these activities were helpful and i hope that you would be including them in your class as well if you need any further help you could reach us on the following number or you could also write us an email thank you so much have a wonderful day